I think we just uh, we just dug in and uh, committed, got some subs. We, we didn't come out very well at the start of the third quarter. The NBA has steadily become one of the most powerful professional sport leagues on the planet. That being said, the NBA has created hundreds of rules and regulations to keep control of the game. That's why we're breaking down the weirdest bans in NBA history. Number 14, Vince Carter, the earbud ban. In 2004, NBA players and all other people around the world were listening to music on an archaic device known as the iPod. Back then, it was cool. The boxy portable stereo allowed a listener to plug in his or her headphones and listen to their song of choice. For Vince Carter, pregame warm-up seemed like an ideal place to use his nifty little Apple invention. Unfortunately for Vince, the NBA hated music, fun, style, and any combination of those three elements. The league banned Carter and any other players from the inner ear warm-up dance party. Their explanation to the Toronto Raptors for why the ruling was necessary remains flawless. Then NBA spokesman Brian McIntyre told reporters, we informed them that he could no longer do that, illuminating. Number 13, Sam Castle, the Big Balls Dance. The infamous Big Balls Dance refers to a player dropping his hands to the groin area while bouncing them up and down to imply the juggling of large testicles. The NBA doesn't like this. No, not players having large testicles, but players insinuating in front of many families that their clutch play directly correlates to their massive balls. Now the NBA fines players, usually to the tune of $15,000 when they make the obscene gesture. Popularized by a man who is remembered less for being a three-time champion and more for looking a lot like E.T. Number 12. Dwayne Wade, fashionable, band-aids? In 2009, long after fashion pioneer and one-time Tim McGraw collaborator Nelly began the movement, Dwayne Wade started wearing graphic print bandages below his left eye in games. Originally used for their actual purpose of treating an injury, Wade's band-aids became an early statement of NBA aesthetic independence. Wade's bandages sported the American flag his Flash nickname, and even his own last name. You probably remember seeing this during the season's All-Star Weekend. The NBA remembered. It banned Wade's stylish bandages because they weren't being worn for healthcare purposes. However, in 2016, the argument can be made that one's outfit freshness has a direct correlation to one's mental health. Number 11, Karin Butler, straw chewing. NBA champion and two-time All-Star Karan Butler is a total badass. Arrested 15 times before his 15th birthday, Butler learned and developed his basketball prowess in juvenile detention. So, what did the NBA do in 2010 upon noticing that Butler, then on the Dallas Mavericks, was constantly chewing straws on the sideline? They banned Karan's straw chewing for the sake of his own well-being. At the time, Tim Frank, NBA Senior Vice President for Basketball Communications, told reporters, it's a safety issue, period. Butler, a man who was a drug dealer by the age of 11 in the tough streets of Racine, Wisconsin, received a permanent ban on chewing straws during games because of his safety. Straw deaths are few and far between in this nation, but it's great that the NBA chose to take a stance before an all-out epidemic occurred. Number 10. Rajon Rondo, the upside down headband. NBA players use headbands for various reasons, keeping sweat out of their eyes, holding back their glorious hair, or even for hiding an unfortunately poor hairline. It's not just LeBron. During his time with the Boston Celtics, Rajon Rondo undertook the outlandish act of wearing his headband upside down. In 2010, in a necessary act of swift, unwavering justice, the NBA announced that uniform rules no longer allowed for players to wear their headbands upside down. Number 9. LeBron James, The Black Mask In the 2013-14 NBA season, LeBron James proved that he is not an immortal creature when he suffered a broken nose in a late February victory over Oklahoma City. 
Because his clear mask was not yet ready, and because he is LeBron James and can do things that other NBA players can't, he donned a black carbon fiber mask to protect his nose in a victory against the New York Knicks. The NBA, however, did not see any reason to celebrate. The league asked, or more appropriately demanded, that James switch back to the typical clear mask before the team's next game. The league wasn't ready to accept a world where they couldn't see LeBron's glorious face at all possible times, nor was it ready to have its best player looking like a Zorro Batman fusion, even though that could only be a positive. Number eight, Matthew Della Vadova, whoop wrist wear. For several games of the Cleveland Cavaliers 2015-2016 season, Point guard and league-wide mosquito Matthew Della Vadova sported a WHOOP bracelet on his wrist. The WHOOP device allowed for Della Vadova to monitor health-related measurements like heart rate or temperature while in-game and provided no harm to anyone in the entire world. The office of the NBA saw the situation differently. Whether it was for given reason of the WHOOP violating the NBA's ban on wearable technology or to prevent Delhi from using his wristband for James Bond-esque espionage purposes, the NBA banned the Cavaliers guard from wearing it for the rest of the season. Here's hoping Delhi stays away from any other sort of whoop-based whooping from the league with his new team, the Milwaukee Bucks. Number seven, Supreme Sleeve. After Kelly Oubre caused a stir by wearing a Supreme compression sleeve, the league tells him to stop wearing it. Ubre speculates that league execs may have found the sleeve to be too wavy. Despite being banned, the exposure was a major victory for the Supreme Company and their limited edition branding. Initially, the sleeve was made in collaboration with Nike. It's clear that the sleeve caused too much of a stir. Ubre even removed the sleeve at halftime. Number six, a hairy situation. Although the NBA allows players to dye their hair crazy colors and get creative with a few of the things they get buzzed in, one of those is not the logo of a brand. One guy in particular, New York Knicks forward Iman Shumpert, found that out last season. That's because Shumpert was forced to shave out the Adidas logo that was previously there, leaving him with a blank triangle on the back of his head for a few weeks because the NBA bans any logos on anything but sneakers. I think Shumpert should have come up with a good excuse to keep it. Number five, dark goggles. After suffering from increased light sensitivity in the wake of a migraine, Dwayne Wade, yes, him again, wears dark goggles in a game against the Knicks. After considering the issue, the league bans the tinted eyewear, saying that it could give Wade an unfair advantage because opponents wouldn't be able to see his eyes. Number four, sneakers. Back in 2010, the NBA banned sneakers from Athletic Propulsion Labs, saying that the sneakers' proprietary jump-boosting technology gave players an unfair competitive advantage. These shoes are steadily growing in popularity off the court. That being said, no one can say for sure whether any player was even able to take advantage of the shoes during a game. Number three, shattering the backboard. Although it is much harder to do nowadays, the NBA does have a rule in place if a player was to break the backboard after a dunk. Long gone are the days of Daryl Dawkins destroying innocent rims, though it could still happen in today's NBA. If this was to happen, the basket would not count and the player would be charged with an unsportsmanlike technical foul. The player may also be fined for the play, which would be determined on a case-by-case -case basis if it were to happen. The last time this was a problem was in 1993 on two separate occasions. The first being Shaquille O'Neal having the entire hoop be damaged after a slam, as well as Chris Morris cracking the backboard during the same year against the Chicago Bulls. The amount of times this rule has been enforced has gone down drastically with the invention of breakaway rims and has not been an issue in quite some time. Not only that, but as soon as the rule was put in place, a number of players ended up being banned from games even though destroying the backboard was out of their control. Number two, long tights. 
Back in 2006, with Lakers star Kobe Bryant and others wearing long tights under their shorts, the league considered banning them, but allowed a loophole for players who claimed a medical need for them. Players throughout the league quickly produced a doctor's note, and soon tights became entrenched as part of the NBA's standard look. Number one, Jordans. During an era when most NBA sneakers are white, Bulls guard Michael Jordan wears black and red Air Jordan 1s in a preseason game. The league immediately bans them from regular season use, or at least that's the party line. Several sneaker historians have challenged that narrative. Jordan later appears on David Letterman's late night show and jokes about the situation. Let us know in the comments of a weird NBA ban you've heard of. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our new content. That has been our breakdown of the weirdest bands in NBA history.